ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय जन्म आदि से यथापयतर तस्ते स्वादिज्ञास्वरान्न ब्रह्मदया अदिकवे मोजंति जूरय तेजो वरी मृता जता विनिमजो जात्र सगुमृश्य दम न स्वेना सदा निरास्त कुहक सत्यंग परम दे महि ओ माय लोर्ड श्री कृष्ण सन ऑफ वासुदेव ओ ओ प्रवेडिंग पर्सनल लो गॉड हैव माय रिस्पेक्ट फॉर बेस एंड सन टू यू I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because He is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. And the creation, sustenance, destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is He only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahma. It's the only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living By being. Him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universe. Only because of him do the material universe. Temporarily manifested by the reaction to the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction to the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode? Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode? Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate. Upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma prajita kaitra vutra. Dharma prajita kaitra vutra. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayo manam. Shivadam tapo trayo manam. Shrimad Bhagavate Mahamuni. Shrimad Bhagavate Mahamuni. Kimba purir Ishwar. किंवा परिरिश्वर हाँ सदियों रुद्धि अवरुद्धिते त्रा सदियों रुद्धि अवरुद्धिते त्रा कृत्य भी सुशुभिष्टक्षण कृत्य भी सुशुभिष्टक्षण completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated this Bhagavat Purana propounds the highest truth this Bhagavat Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is that reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold misery. Such a truth uproots the threefold misery. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kapatoro galitam falam. Nigama kapatoro tagam falam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samgitam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samgitam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho rasika bhuvi bhavaka. Muhur aho rasika bhuvi bhavaka. O expert and thoughtful man, relish shimad bhagavatam. Who oh, expand and told from men really smart over time. The mature fruit of the desire to Vedic literature. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam swat 
Sakata Krishna, Shambhatam Sakata Krishna, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Vidyantaksto Hi Abadrani, Vidyantaksto Hi Abadrani, Vidu Noti Suhitsatam, Vidu Noti Suhitsatam, to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is it self righteous activity? It's self righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna is dwelling in everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as the best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preesu abhadreesu. Nasta preesu abhadreesu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant as he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, as he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam, and from the devotees, and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamalo badayas chaye. Kamalo badayas chaye. Jai jai tairan avidam. Jai jai tairan avidam. Stitvam sadve prasidati. Stitvam sadve prasidati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the mode of passion and ignorance. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manasa. Evam prasanna manasu Bhagavad bhakti yogataha Bhagavad bhakti yogataha Bhagavad tattva vijnanam Bhagavad tattva vijnanam Mukta sangasya jayate Mukta sangasya jayate When these impurities are wiped away when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Become enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Siyante chasyakarmani. Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves a hard knot of material affection. So it's a hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee, Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotees in Krishna consciousness, in Krishna consciousness. can one understand the science of Krishna. Srimad Bhagavate Gantaraj Ki Jai, Canto 1, Chapter 18, Verse Number 15. Tano Bhavan Vai Bhagavat Pradhanu Tano Bhavan Vai Bhagavat Pradhanu Mahatamai Kanta Parayanasya Mahatamai Kanta Parayanasya Hare Rudaram Charitam Visudam Hare Rudaram Charitam Visudam Susru Satam Nau Vitano Tu Vidyan Vidman Susru Satam Novita Mutvidam Translation by His Divine Grace is Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. O Sutta Goswami, you are a learned and pure devotee of the Lord because the personality of Godhead is your chief object of service. Therefore, please describe to us the pastimes of the Lord, which are above all material conceptions. For we are anxious to receive such messages, purported by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The speaker on the transcendental activities of the Lord should have only one subject of worship and service, Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the audience for such topics should be anxious to hear about Him. 
When such a combination is possible, namely a qualified speaker and a qualified audience, it is then and there very much congenial to continue discourses on the transcendent, transcendent, transcendence. Professional speakers and a materially absorbed audience cannot derive real benefit from such discourses. Professional speakers make a show of Bhagavat Saptaha for the sake of family maintenance and the materially disposed audience hears such discourses of Bhagavat Saptaha for some material benefit, namely religiosity, wealth, gratification of senses, or liberation. Such Bhagavatam discourses are not purified from the contamination of the material qualities. But the discourses between the saints of Naimishranya and Sri Sutta Goswami are on the transcendental level. There, there is no motive for material gain. In such discourses, unlimited transcendental pleasure is relished both by the audience and by the speaker. And therefore, they can continue the topics for many thousands of years. Now, Bhagavata Saptaha are held for seven days only. And after finishing the show, both the audience and the speaker become engaged in material activities as usual. They can do so because the speaker is not Bhagavat Pradhana, and the audience is not Shushusatam, as explained above. Srila Prabhupada Ki so there's a science to hearing, and this is explained by Krishna. In order to hear Vedic knowledge properly, one must be uh, self-controlled by engaging the senses only in devotional service. One must be patient by not being disturbed by many material desires. One must be uh, determined because they follow the regulative principles on, on a regular basis and chant their rounds, etc. And clean, they must be bathing at least twice a day. And they have uh, a, a uh, a gentle behavior, a gentle nature. They're not troubled by lust, anger, greed, madness, illusion, and envy. Now, these are some of the qualifications. There are more. But uh, if a person simply follows the process of devotional service as, Christ, as Srila Prabhupada has given it to us, all these qualities develop naturally, uh, one after the other. You don't have to individually try to achieve one than the other, they will all come uh, in a sequence or, or at once to the devotee who's serious about following the rules and regulations, regularly chanting 16 good rounds minimum, and hearing the lectures regularly, and uh, worshiping the deity, associating favorably with devotees and having specific time-sensitive service. Uh, so there's no question of being whimsical, there's no question of being uh, unnecessarily upset over trifles. One is determined to continue in devotional service, which is the meaning of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So Prabhupada says, but the discourses between the saints of Naimisharanya and Sri Sutta Goswami are on the transcendental level. There's no motive for material gain. Well, that's an important point because as soon as one has a motive for material gain, they become uh, not steady in devotional service. This is explained in Bhagavad Gita where it says 
not only in one place, but in many places, the same point is being made. That is, yeah, an, an intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery which are due to contact with the material senses. O son of Kunti, such pleasures have a beginning and an end, and so the wise man does not delight in them. So we see that uh, the devotees are uniquely interested in self-realization, and the materialists are uniquely interested in gaining wealth in order to engage in sense gratification. That's the difference right there. So they have an uh, unending number of material desires. One desire is satisfied, they go to another desire. One desire is frustrated, they become upset and angry and uh, become illusioned and determined to get that uh, thing that they wanted material thing for sense gratification. So we see that uh, there's no peace and there's no real happiness if our goal in life is to aggrandize wealth, power, prestige, and, and uh, uh, control over others, etc. So therefore, Rishabhadev spoke to his sons and he said nayam deha deho deha bhajan nir loke kastam kamam arhate vidbujam te tapo divyam putraka yena sarvam sudayed yasmad brahmasukyam pranantam my dear sons there's no reason to labor very hard for sense pleasure while in this human form of life such pleasures are available to the stool leaders meaning hogs. Rather, you should undergo penances in this life by which your existence will be purified. And as a result, you'll be able to enjoy unlimited transcendental bliss. Now this is a real father's advice to his children. And why, what, what, what is in this uh, verse? Uh, there's a lot of major points in this verse. Number one is that uh, there's no reason to work very hard for sense pleasure. Why? Well, because the sense pleasures that we're going to enjoy are already predetermined. Whether you work, you don't work, you're going to get them. <laughs> so, and in the same way, the misery and suffering is also predetermined whether you have millions of dollars or you have uh, only pennies, you're gonna get the suffering. You can't change it. it. It is fixed already. That's what he's saying here. And also, Bhagavatam says the same thing. Taisyayivaheto prayata kovido. Prayateta kovido. Nalabhyate yad brahma tam uparyada. The human being should exert his energy for that thing which he did not get in many, many lives. Through many, many lives, the soul has been in the forms of dogs or demigods or cats or birds or insects. These are, there are 8,400,000 material forms. So this transmigration is going on. But in every one of these millions of forms, the business is sense gratification. The dog is busy for sense gratification. Where is food? Where is shelter? Where is a mate? How to defend? And the man is also doing the same business in different ways. So this struggle for existence is going on, life after life, even a small insect is engaging in the same struggle. Ahara nidjabaya maitunam. Eating, sleeping, defending, and mating. Bird, beast, insect, fish, everywhere the same struggle. Where is food? Where is sex? Where is shelter? How to defend? 
So the Shastra or scripture says, we have done these things in many, many past lives. And if we don't get out of the struggle for existence, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, we'll have to do them again in many, many future lives. So these things should be stopped. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj advises his friends, Srimad Bhagavatam 7.6.3, Sukam Aindri Yakam Daitya Deha Yogena Dehinam Sarvatra Labhyate Daivad Yatadukam Ayat Nataha. My dear friends, material pleasure, which is due simply to this material body, is essentially the same in any body. And just as misery comes without our trying for it, so the happiness we deserve will also come by higher arrangement. A dog has a material body, and I have a material body. So my sex pleasure and a dog's sex pleasure is the same. Of course, the dog is not afraid of having sex on the street in front of everyone. We hide it. We humans hide it in a nice apartment. That's all. But the activity is the same. There's no difference. Still, people are taking the sex pleasure between a man and woman in a nice decorated apartment as very advanced. But this is not advanced. And yet, they are making a dog's race for this advancement. Prahlad Maharaj says we are imagining that there are different types of pleasure on account of different types of body, but the pleasure is fundamentally the same. So, this is the message of Vedic culture. Vedic culture, you're not supposed to work real hard for sense gratification, but you should work very hard for self-realization. There's a big difference. Self-realization means you know what is matter, chetra, the field of activity, 24 elements, and what is the body, it's 24 elements, plus the jiva, plus the paramatma, 26 elements of the body. And uh, what is, what makes the body work? Well, it's the jiva and the paramatma. They're all interdependent, interdependent. They all uh, function uh, together. Without one of them, you can't function. And then uh, where, so, and then there's a difference between the jiva and the paramatma. At no time does the jiva become paramatma, as the mayavadis say, which is completely nonsense. And then the jiva, the chetra, or the material nature, the jiva, the Paramatma, it all comes from Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Even Narayana comes from Krishna. This was stated by Bhisma Pitamaha. It's stated by Arjuna. It's stated by Kalushakar Alvar. It's stated by Nam Alvar. It's stated by Ramanujacharya. It's stated by all the great Mahajans, Lord Shiva, Prahlad Maharaj, Narada Muni, Prithu Maharaj, the Kumaras, and so forth. So that is called self-realization. The material body, the chetra, or the sum total of all the material elements, the jiva, the paramatma, Everything is coming from Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That, is, that, that whole thing is self-realization. It's just not, oh, I've realized myself now. I'm an American. That's not self-realization. That's bodily identification. You see. So that, that's not, nowhere near self-realization. In fact, it's the opposite. It's identifying with the wrong thing. And when you identify with the body, you develop the false ego and therefore you'll go off merrily in the wrong direction. It's just like buying a new car. You bought a new car because you want to come to the temple. But uh, you heard some radio advertisement of how much fun it'll be if you go to Mukilteo Casino. So when you drive out of the, uh, the car, uh, the car uh, company, 
after buying your car, instead of coming to the temple, you go to the casino. So what, what was the use of buying a new car, right? Uh, if you're gonna go in the wrong direction. So in the same way, what's the use of having a human body if you go in the wrong direction, if you do the same thing as the dogs and the hogs and the insects and the birds and the bees and uh, the alligator, all of them are doing the same thing as you are, sense gratification. So that does not differentiate a human being from an animal. That makes the human being an animal in violation of the human form. The human form is specifically given to us for self-realization. And if we use it for self-aggrandizement or self-indulgence, then we're violating the whole purpose of the human form and then we'll get a suitable body as an animal, insect, aquatic, bird, whatever. Uh, in order to uh, act on, on the level that we uh, are choosing to act on. So, therefore, Prabhupada says that naturally, according to the different types of body, there are some external differences in the pleasure. But the basic amount and quality of this pleasure has very well defined limitations. That is called he says destiny, but he means fate. A pig has a certain type of body and is eatable as stool. This is destined. You cannot change it. Let the pig eat halva. That's not possible. Because the soul has a particular type of body, he must eat a particular type of food. Can anyone, any scientist, improve the standard of living of a pig? Is it possible? No. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj says that everything about material pleasure is already fixed. The uncivilized men in the jungle are having the same sex pleasure as the so-called civilized men who boast, oh, instead of living in that hut made of leaves, we are living in a skyscraper building. This is advancement. But Vedic civilization says, no, this is not advancement. Real advancement is self-realization how you have realized your relationship with God. Sometimes people misunderstand, thinking that sages who try for self-realization are lazy. In a high court, a judge is sitting soberly, apparently doing nothing, and he is getting the highest salary. And another man in the same court, he's working hard all day long, rubber stamping, and he's getting not even one-tenth of the judge's salary, he's thinking. I am so busy and working so hard, yet I am not getting a good salary. And this man, the judge, is just sitting on the bench and he's getting such a fat salary. The criticism of Hinduism as inhibiting progress is like that. It comes out of ignorance. The Vedic civilization is for self-realization. It is meant for the intelligent person, the person who will not just work like an ass, but who will try for that thing which he did not achieve in so many other lives, namely, trying for self-realization. So, this is a wonderful explanation by Prabhupada in his book, Civilization and Transcendence. So today, we're hearing that there's a way to hear Bhagavatam, and there's a way to speak Bhagavatam. And, and both the speaker and the hearer must be qualified. Otherwise, one will not feel transcendental happiness and the urge to continue hearing over and over again. Not just seven days, but the rest of one's life. As soon as one gets the taste, due to a bona fide speaker and bona fide hearers. So Prabhupada says here, the speaker on transcendental activities of the Lord should have only one subject of worship and service, Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality got it. And the audience for such topics should be anxious to hear about him, meaning Krishna. When such a combination is possible, namely a qualified speaker and a qualified audience, it is then and there very much congenial to continue discourses on the transcendence. In other words, it's a pleasure to come to the class. It's a pleasure to hear. It's a pleasure to ask questions. It's a pleasure to make comments. It's a pleasure to, uh, to study 
uh, during the day what you, or remember during the day what you heard and, what, and something new that you learned. In fact, you should keep a journal. Uh, one new thing that you learn every day. After 360 days, you'll be a pundit. Yeah. If you make, keep that journal. And you go over that journal. <coughs> you don't have to say, oh, today I went to the gym. I worked out. <laughs> and then I went to this restaurant and I ate meatloaf. And it was really good because it had some sauce on top of it. And then I took a nap. And then when I woke up, lo and behold, I was so happy because now I went, I'm going to the casino. And in the casino, I won some money. So it was a perfect day. That's what they're writing in their journal. <laughs> you see? But the devotee keep his, keeps a journal. This morning in class, I heard this. It was, a, it was a point that, although I might have heard before, I didn't really understand it. That is that we all have a fixed fate due to our previous karma. But the good news is, and I heard what Prabhupada said, the good news is that although you can't change your your karmic fate, it's already fixed. You're going to have a certain amount of happiness and a certain amount of misery. And they're, and they're both limited. However, Prabhupada says also, he quotes the verse, karmani nirdahati kintuchit bhakti bhajan. And that means that in the Brahma Samhita, Krishna says, for those who serve Krishna with love and devotion, Krishna can change your fate so that you can make a very auspicious destiny in this lifetime. So sacrifice, yagya means pleasing Krishna. Our whole Krishna consciousness movement means pleasing Krishna. That is the whole program. In all other business, there is no question of pleasing Krishna. When one nation declares war upon another, there's no question of pleasing Krishna or serving Krishna. They're pleasing their own senses, serving their own whims. When the First and Second World Wars began, it was not for pleasing Krishna. The Germans wanted that their sense gratification not be hampered by the Britishers. That means it was a war of sense gratification. The Britishers are achieving their sense gratification, and the Germans said, we cannot, they're holding us back. All right, let's fight. So there was no question of pleasing Krishna. So we see that it is possible, it's not possible to change one's destiny, or, or one's fate, uh, of a mixed bag of happiness and suffering by increasing wealth. Whether you're wealthy or poor, our Happiness and misery is already fixed from previous life. Whether you work, whether you don't work, it's already fixed. However, you can temper or eliminate the whole bag of good and bad karma if you become a genuine devotee. And then you, your destiny, it becomes transcendence in this life and in the future. So that's the good Good news. Okay, we'll stop right there. Are there any questions? Okay, no questions. No an Yeah. Great and listening. Yes. in the past also. So the, the question of whether somebody is determined to even seek self-realization. If that, someone is not determined or is, is determined? Is determined to seek self-realization. Uh, self yes. Is that part of their fate or is that outside of the fate? Well, uh, how did they get determined? just happen naturally. One morning they wake up when they're 15 years old and say, I'm not going to go to school anymore. I'm just going to 
associate with devotees, join the temple, and uh, and uh, spend the rest of my life being a brahmachari. So most likely they have an association of uh, yeah, which is determined for them uh, based on maybe their. It crime. might not be. Mm. It might be what's called causeless mercy, mm. or it may be because of some pious activity in previous life. Yeah. So, but even even if it's due to pious activity in in previous life, still going into the association of devotees is a very auspicious thing. And then completing one's uh, development, self-realization in this lifetime, it depends on their determination and the association that they have. Right? So it's not that you know. I mean, there's there's a uh, it, there's the classical example of the kitten that holds on to its mother's uh, chest, and the mother carries it, or the kitten that is uh, held in the mouth of the mother, and the mother carries it. Mm. So this question has always been debated: Is devotional service about you know holding on to Krishna, or is it we are helpless and then Krishna picks us up and carries us? Well, it's a mixture of both. It's not just one or the other. It's a mixture of both. Sometimes we need to be carried, and other times we're holding on for our life to Krishna consciousness. So, is it so? The holding on means it's your effort that uh, determines what's going to happen, and the other one, it it's all depends on Krishna. You know, if you accept the Lord, then he'll pick you up and he'll do everything, whether you do something or not. Mm. So, uh, one or the other. Well, no, it's a combination of both. God helps those who help themselves, right? So right there, that English proverb means that, you know, uh, if you choose to seek self-realization, you have to work for it. Mm. You can't just say, well, I'll just sit here, you know, and push out on fall out of the sky right into my <laughs> mouth and money will come without saying anything, you know, Krishna will do everything. All I have to do is just sit here on my butt and every, I'll just get fat and everything will happen. No. You have to work even harder for self-realization by engaging, following strictly all the rules and regulations. So it's a combination of both. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. All glories to Sila Prabhupada. Keep a journal. Keep a journal. Mm. I went to the gym. I ate a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> they write journals like that. And they write daily. Yeah, every day. Yeah.